Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding. Mountain. Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you about something that was uh, just mentioned in the comments section because I always get the fanatics showing up. Uh, and, and some of you are really nice fanatics. Don't get me wrong. But there's some misconceptions that you have that are a bit naive. Now, I'm not saying that you're wrong to follow your own path. Okay, so whatever path is working for you, you might be right about what's right for you. Okay, I just want to disclaimer this. But the only issue I have is that a lot of times people will make comments based on what's right for them and then assume your situation and your body, your constitution is exactly the same as theirs. And if your experience isn't the same as theirs, they say there's something wrong with you or you have some misconception. Now, it is true that sometimes your experience may be limited and it may evolve. That is also something that can happen. So I'm not saying that uh, people that have a certain experience can't be wrong. Uh, they may be wrong about what they assume is their limitation of their physical body or not. But if they've conducted 30 year or 40 year experiments and keep on finding the same thing over and over again, there's a good chance that they are right. Okay. <laughs> so this is where I sometimes am floored by some of the comments I get because I've conducted certain experiments for almost four decades and I kept on landing on the same realization over and over again through these different experiments. And so the training you see me do is because I have made deep realizations over and over again. It's, it's not because I didn't try to deviate from my training philosophies or go in certain directions. So basically my topic today is powerlifting necessary for a natural bodybuilder to get ideal development. And I will say it depends what part of powerlifting you are speaking about. Because powerlifting isn't just lifting heavier weight. It's also lifting weight a certain way, which has nothing to do with activating more muscle. A lot of times it has to do with taking the path of least resistance, right? You know this when it comes down to uh, heavy bench pressing, you're trying to keep the elbows tucked and push towards the eyes with the bar, which arguably is the safest way to bench press. And it allows you to push a certain amount of weight, which is great. Once you're doing heavy poundages, I definitely recommend having more of an elbow tuck in your bench. So my main point is, is that the techniques involved in powerlifting have to do with lifting as much weight as possible in the easiest way possible, given a certain range of motion. So the priority is to lift from point A to point B, but not necessarily recruit as much of certain muscle groups more than others, especially the bodybuilding ones. Touch my chest. Okay, look, look at this. See, look, touching it, touching away. Look, like this. I could touch my chest. Look, look at this. I know you're like, people care about me. They're like, touch your chest, Jason. We care about you. Touch your chest. My arms could be on the ground. They don't care. They're like, I, we don't care, Jason, as long as you touch your chest. I want to cause attention because I want to look like I touch my chest, but not actually touch my chest. So one exercise example comes to mind and, and all of you guys have seen this. If you look on Instagram or you look on YouTube or something like that, you'll see some person bench pressing for a powerlifting meet and you'll see that some of them, their back or their upper back is in the shape of a U. So that basically this enables them to change the bench press into a form of decline and at the same time only use one inch of range of motion in order to have a good bench press. So I know that this is an exaggerated example, but this is an example of the main goal of powerlifting, and that is to lift the weight meeting the specifications 
of the sport. It really has nothing to do with putting stress on the muscles that you want to grow or preventing injury to the joints involved in any sort of lift, right? It's not really about the preservation of the body long term. This doesn't mean that powerlifting is necessarily bad, but if you're not built for it, or at least you may have certain conditions that you can't meet without getting extreme problems with your joints, then it would make sense for you to discard those stipulations around the exercise altogether and do them in the way that prevents you from getting injured instead of creating injuries. Just so you know, I'd totally be lifting this rock right now just to show you by example uh, you know, what it's like to lift really heavy shit. But, but I decided I don't want to show off. You know, that's not what this channel's about. I mean, there's enough people in the world showing off right now, so I just wanted to kind of shelter you from that. So when powerlifters are squatting, they're not concerned about getting more quadricep development or hamstring development. They're just concerned about recruiting as much of the overall muscles as possible and making sure they can lift that weight from point A to point B. Now, that can be a foundational principle for you in your heavy lifts. But what if going beyond a certain range of motion causes injury to you? Or maybe you're not built to squat parallel or ass to the grass squats. Maybe when you go down that deep, all you do is feel like your knees are falling apart. No matter how much exercises you do, no matter how much stretching you do, no matter how much coaching you get, right? You just find out that there is a certain genetic limitation in a certain range of motion. What do you do then? Well, my answer is follow the wisdom of the body. And you may be able to take some powerlifting principles and apply them to your natural bodybuilding program, but that doesn't mean that using the exact same range of motion in powerlifting is necessary in order for you to gain strength or gain muscle mass. So if somebody's making a comment to say, you know, lifting heavy to get stronger is a necessary part of natural bodybuilding, I would agree with them 100%. But the place that I would disagree is when it comes down to choosing your range of motion based on powerlifting standards, right? If touching your chest with an elbow tuck is necessary in powerlifting, what if you just feel more front delts doing that and you have a weak chest and you want your chest to get more development? Well, then touching your chest with a bar is not necessary. You see what I'm saying? Just like deadlifting from the floor, you barely ever see pro bodybuilders deadlift from the floor. A lot of times they'll deadlift a bit above the floor because they know that when they deadlift right straight from the floor, they wear out their lower back so much and their upper back never gets challenged and they're trying to build that upper back. And at the same time, if you've got short little Tyrannosaurus Rex arms like me and long femurs and so forth, deadlifting from the floor just overly challenges the lower back and basically burns it out for leg day, <laughs> but it doesn't necessarily help with uh, gaining more muscle mass. And, and in my case, I did have a lower back injury when I was 20 from deadlifting from the floor. Wrong, of course, I was doing it wrong back then and I learned the hard way. Uh, but at the same time, I've found that every time I deadlift on the floor, I get a different type of soreness in the lower back that doesn't feel quite right. And so what you wanna do is you wanna work your joints. You wanna work the joints of the body, but you don't want to rip them or tear them down. And there are some exercises in powerlifting, if done a certain way, that will tear you down instead of help you put on muscle injury free. And that's my priority. So powerlifting in its very traditional form, I would say it's not good for most natural bodybuilders or at least a good percentage of them. Unless of course exercises are already agreeing with you at certain ranges of motion and so forth, I would really look at how your body's responding to that. And if you're just following the standard powerlifting template, you might end up injuring yourself or basically not necessarily getting the results that you could. So yeah, this channel is about honoring your own nature. It's not about lying to yourself either though. I mean, it's, it's about really honestly assessing whether you are having a flexibility problem or, or something like that. But at the same time, if your body keeps showing you over and over again that it does not like a certain way of moving under large amounts of load, and you're getting inflammation or pain in the joints because of it, then I would say it's time for you to assess whether you should be a part of the powerlifting cult or not. Because honestly, what I'm seeing right now is that there are these different cults 
in bodybuilding, in lifting, in CrossFit, in powerlifting, that are saying, hey, if you don't lift like I do, then somehow you are a subhuman of some sort. And that nothing could be furthest from the truth. This looks like I'm sitting for a class photo, doesn't it? Perfect little rock here for my grade two picture. So to be clear about what I'm saying is that I do feel that there is a happy medium between range of motion, muscle tension, and heavy weight. And finding the perfect combination of these three variables for your own individual situation is ideal for more muscle mass and healthier joints. Not everybody is going to be able to do the same thing that somebody else will do when it comes down to certain ranges of motion or certain exercises. And of course, we all know those people out there that get great muscle activation from a certain exercise, and then their training partner might not get the same type of muscle activation or results, and they have to do a different exercise. So this proves my point. There is muscular tension and the way that it plays out in each individual for certain exercises is different. And it's also the same when it comes down to range of motion because our muscular insertions, muscle bellies and so forth interact in a symphony of tension. And that symphony will have different influences than somebody else's symphony, uh, certain dominant influences. So depending on how your pec tendon attaches to the humerus will also play out in how much tricep growth you're getting from pressing movements, right? So this is all related and, and only through acceptance that you are your own individual symphony can you start to really play around with all this stuff and get rid of all the dogma and the propaganda and feel yourself through what is the perfect program or perfect exercise or range of motion in order for you to gain muscle. And once you find that, then you can start playing around with low repetitions, high repetitions and so forth. But I do know that if you just start doing exercises blindly and not feeling what's happening in your body at the same time, you might be in for an injury or a disaster. And most of the guys I know in the gym, they might not want to admit it to you, but every one of them have messed themselves up at one time or another by not listening to what their body was saying. So in the end, although I do agree that you need to put on strength in order to put on muscle, and then you rep out with that strength, uh, using the traditional ranges of motion in powerlifting might or might not work for you or work against you. So you have to assess this and be honest with yourself and not fall for the peer pressure, right? I mean, you weren't supposed to fall for peer pressure in high school. Why are you supposed to fall for it now? So that's what I got to say about that. So yeah, for the record, I never squatted parallel because I always found it just destroyed my knees to do that. It wasn't because I didn't have the strength because I, I can lift huge amounts of weight down to parallel. It's just that my knees feel like garbage. But at the same time, you'll notice that I never have to use any equipment either. I don't use knee wraps. I don't use a belt. I don't have to use elbow wraps. I don't wear a bench shirt. I don't have to wear wrist guards, none of that stuff. And that's because I've honored my own individuality and lifted the way that my body felt was correct for it. Honor the fact that your body's speaking to you and find your own way. That's what I got to say. Mountain. So I hope this helps out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com. And thanks a lot to the Patreon supporters. And take care for now. Mountain. Mountain. <laughs>